Hi, this is Mr. Ferguson from East Millbrook. Uh, today we're going to look at our chemical formula notes. We're going to be looking at um, how do we read and understand what a chemical formula is telling us. Uh, first thing we need to know is that the symbol. Uh, symbol represents one atom of that element. So big B, little a here would represent one barium atom. Now, it's really important to notice that uppercase and lowercase are very important when we're dealing with the periodic table. So if I just had one capital O, that's one oxygen atom. A capital S would be one sulfur atom. And if I put a capital O with a capital S, that's one sulfur with one oxygen. But if I do a capital O with a lowercase s, uh, that's one osmium atom, which is a metal, which is very different than a sulfur and an oxygen. So we need to make sure that we're paying close attention to the capital and the lowercase letters. Uh, subscript. Next thing we need to look at is a subscript. Sub means below, script means to write. So a subscript is the small number that we write down below. It belongs to whatever is coming just before it. So the two in Cl2 means that there are two chlorine atoms. That two again represents two. Now these two are bonded together. They're switching, swapping, sharing electrons. So they're stuck together, Cl2. That's one molecule. Let's take a look at a formula, K2CO3. First thing we want to look at is our subscripts. The two up here belongs to the K. It does not belong to the C. So we're going to build a little model to take a look at that. Uh, we're going to build that model first, take a look at the Ks. We need two of them. Uh, C does not have a subscript, so that means that there's one. Uh, we don't put a one there if it's one because the letter's there, that represents it. So the symbol tells me that there is at least one. The three next to the O means that I have three oxygens. There's my molecule. So if we were going to go ahead and count up and take a look at what atoms are in here, we know that we have potassium, carbon, and oxygen. The potassium symbol is the big K, carbon C, oxygen O. We'd be able to count up these atoms by looking at the model very easily and just count them up. There's two potassiums, one carbon, three oxygens, which give us a total of six atoms. Now, let's bring in a real simple molecule. Let's take a look at water. My water molecule, H2O, should be pretty simple to make a model of. That two belongs to the H, it does not belong to the O, so that means I have two hydrogens with one oxygen. That's my water molecule. Again, hydrogen and oxygen, symbols capital H, capital O, two, one, three. But a problem comes in here. What if I have H2O plus H2O plus H2O? That's a lot of writing. We don't want to have to do all that writing. Just like in math, if I had X plus X plus X, I'd be able to shorten that. Well, in science, we use the exact same thing. That's a coefficient. So we get rid of those and we bring in the coefficient. Coefficient is the large number that comes before the formula. This number belongs to the whole formula. The little number, the subscript, tells me how many of that atom is in each molecule. The coefficient tells me how many molecules. So that three would tell me that there are three water molecules. Now that's going to change my count down below so that I now have two times three, six hydrogens. I've got three times one, three for now a total of nine atoms. So again, I can use this three and if I'm just trying to count it up, think of it like distributive property. Three times two would give me six hydrogens and the three times one would give me three oxygens. Now the next wrinkle we need to be able to look at would be parentheses. Um, parentheses, just like as in mathematics, are a grouping symbol. They're used to tell us these things stay together. This two still belongs to the Fe, the iron. So in my model, I need two of those. Just like in math, we're gonna work inside the parentheses first. So these parentheses, inside that parentheses, I see that I have one S and four O's. Now the little three that's outside there, that three is belongs to the parentheses. It's telling me that I have three of whatever is inside the parentheses. In this case, the SO4. 
So now, this is my molecule. This is my model. So I can count them up. Fe is iron, S is sulfur, and the O is oxygen. If I'm counting up my irons, I've got two of them. If I'm counting the sulfurs, I've got three of those. And I'm counting up the oxygen, I have 12 for a total of 17. Um, if I don't want to um, draw out the model, seeing that there's two irons is pretty easy. This three over here also, because it's outside the parentheses, you can think of it a lot like we do in mathematics, where the three outside the parentheses, we would use distributive property to multiply it by everybody on the inside. So when I'm looking at my sulfur, I've got one inside the parentheses times the three outside gives me three sulfurs. Inside I've got four oxygens times that three gives me 12 oxygens. I hope this has helped you out. Uh, again, thanks for tuning in. Bye.